Discover Health with Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System. Follow this man's journey as he takes on his personal mission to lose hundreds of pounds. Hit in the head? It could be deadly. Avoid serious accidents due to brain injuries. A woman lays dying after a traumatic car crash. Will she live? Come inside the trauma unit as doctors frantically try to save her. And keeping your kids safe by making the right choices. Hi, I'm Dr. Janessa Motlis with Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System. Before we get into the show, I want you to start thinking about eating healthy. We believe in making healthy happen together. And that starts with the foods you eat. Joining me is Chef Bill Zabala. Hi, Dr. Motlis. Hello. Have you ever heard the phrase, eat a rainbow a day? It refers to eating fruits and vegetables like these in a variety of colors, which gives you a valuable range of nutrients. We'll use some of these in the healthy dish that we're gonna to create today, such as this Tuscan kale, some avocado, toasted quinoa, some roasted beets, and some berries. We're also gonna add a three ounce portion of chicken breast to the dish today for our protein. That sounds great. We'll be back at the end of the show with a look at the final healthy dish we create. Thanks, Janessa and Bill, and welcome to Discover Health with Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System. I'm Ann Keffer, and joining me is Dr. Andrew Motlis, a gastroenterologist with Medical Group of the Carolinas in Spartanburg. Thanks, Ann. We are here inside the new critical care pavilion at Spartanburg Medical Center. This state-of-the-art facility houses the intensive care and critical care units as part of the master facilities plan to reshape, update, and expand the entire campus. That's right, this first phase includes adding 110,000 square feet of new space and 68 more patient beds in this six-story emergency room pavilion. The sixth floor has a state-of-the-art telemetry central monitoring station providing monitoring of all telemetry patients throughout the entire hospital from a dedicated location. We're also excited to offer some great information to not only keep you healthy, but improve your life. We wanna show you how to stay active and keep your brain healthy. And you can start your journey to good health just by using your phone. Starting the journey to good health is as easy as looking at your smartphone. There are free apps already available to you that help with anything from building healthy habits to activities to get you moving to tracing your movements. For example, on this Galaxy phone, there is the S Health free app. It uses body sensors to collect personal health data. It tracks activity and can monitor your heart rate, track your calories, and even help ensure you're getting a good night's sleep. Apple is putting an emphasis on health, and so newer iPhones come fully equipped with a health app. This health app automatically counts your steps, walking, and running distances. You can link activity trackers to it or use it on its own to count steps, track sleep and exercise, and all sorts. Whatever your health or wellness goals, there's probably an app to help keep you organized and on track. You can always download other free apps available in both the iTunes App Store and the Google Play Store. We want to introduce you to a man who is on a journey to save his own life by losing hundreds of pounds. It's an incredible story. It's not easy, but he's getting expert help at Spartanburg Regional. And we'll follow him in the months ahead as he faces the hard work to keep the weight off. Robert Gillian says he is on a journey to save his life. He states, I'm doing this for me and for my family. It started 100 pounds ago, when he knew he needed to take drastic steps to keep his health. He's down to 500 pounds and is ready for weight loss surgery. Roughly 12 million people in the United States are considered morbidly obese, meaning they are more than 100 pounds over their ideal body weight. Many, like Robert, have tried various diets and other weight loss methods. Robert opted for gastric bypass surgery. The weight loss surgery program at Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System is more than a surgical procedure or a meal replacement program. It offers a comprehensive approach, including classes, counseling, team support, and physicians and medical professionals working to improve the overall quality of life for morbidly obese patients and their families. In gastric bypass surgery, the stomach is stapled to create a small stomach pouch the size of an egg limiting the amount of food consumed at each meal. The remaining portion of the stomach is stapled closed, separating it from the active stomach pouch. The surgeon will then divide your small intestine and connect the middle portion of the intestine to the newly formed stomach pouch. 
This will allow the stomach pouch to empty directly into the lower portion of the small intestine. For any patient on their personal weight loss journey, the Weight Loss Surgery Team offers medical expertise and support and is committed to helping patients achieve long-term weight loss and health goals. In the months ahead, Robert will be working hard to make his bypass surgery a success. We'll be checking back with him and showing how much weight he is losing as he continues his journey to keep the weight off. Well, you may know the feeling you bend over and suddenly feel a warning tweak in your back. For so many people, that tweak turns into serious back pain, but there's a lot you can do to make sure it won't interfere with your life. It affects most of us at some point in our lives, back pain, whether from a simple wrong movement, aging, a sporting injury, or from a severe accident. Back pain can limit activities or even drastically impact daily life. The sad reality is we all age, and just like tires wear, we wear. So as time goes on, the nerve channel gets narrower, we get more bone spurs, we get more pinching, and unfortunately, we all face that reality. And that's usually why people end up in our clinic. At Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System, a team of experts, including physical therapists, massage therapists, and surgeons, works with each patient to determine the best treatment options. Treatment for back pain depends on the type of pain and what is causing it. It may include rehabilitation, medicines, injections, and sometimes surgery. So when you get an irritation in your spine, what happens is your big muscles tend to tighten up. And when they tighten up, they're gonna inhibit your small muscles. So your small muscles are your stabilizers and they're gonna be able to stabilize your spine or any of your joints. So therefore, you're gonna get increased shear force. When you do the manipulation, it's gonna free up those big muscles so the little muscles can work. Specialized rehabilitation works on overall strength and endurance, getting muscles active again. If they don't get active, now you're gonna have what's called abnormal motor control. So your muscles just aren't gonna fire in the correct pattern. Therefore, you're gonna get abnormal stress onto joints that normally should function appropriately. And that abnormal stress can lead to additional stress on the tissue that's already irritated. And now you get in this pain cycle to where you can't get better. About 75% of our patients usually do well with rehab. Massage is another option for patients. With a doctor's approval, patients can see almost immediate results. Reduce tension, soreness, and stress. Massage can help with back pain by relieving the stress, loosening up the muscles. It increases circulation, so you get more blood flow and nutrients to those muscles. It uh, can improve your sleep, help you feel better. The most common back pain we see is low back, um, a lot of limited range of motion, even up into the cervical area with the neck, a lot of that can be limited range of motion. You'll see people that have been in pain for years and you work with them for six, seven sessions and they come back to you and say, I can now walk upstairs one foot at a time. I don't have to take it one stair at a time. For many patients facing age-related back issues, surgery is the only answer. Getting back on your feet is one of the most important things. We always tell people activity is why we want you to go through surgery. We want you to be active. We don't treat x-rays or MRIs, we treat the patient. So we really try something smaller first. Do they just need decompression, meaning do they need space for the nerves? And we reserve fusions or those big hardware cases for people with scoliosis, people who have unstable spines, maybe even fractures. But the true neurologic problems like leg weakness, leg pain, we need to make space for the nerves. And that's when surgery becomes helpful. Finding the right solution for patients with back pain, a comprehensive team approach from surgeons and therapists at Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System. You hear about traumatic brain injuries or concussions happening in all kinds of sports, from the NFL to soccer. In fact, concussions are happening to kids even in elementary school. But did you know Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine Specialists can detect concussions early and can also save your brain from serious injury? A blow to the head that shakes the brain, whether from a sport, a fall, or some other accident, is something to take seriously. A concussion is a type of brain injury and causes temporary changes in the way the brain works. And you don't want it to happen more than once. If you're experiencing symptoms of a concussion and you take another hit to the head, your symptoms can get dramatically worse. And I've had kids who uh, were doing well, but then took a second hit and 
became basically dysfunctional at that point, have had to drop out of school, go on homebound. So preventing that second hit is very, very important for us as medical professionals. Concussions are taken very seriously at Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine Institute at Upward Sports Center and at North Grove. Patients are regularly sent to the concussion clinic at the Sports Medicine Institute for an evaluation of a head injury. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do a neurologic exam to make sure that they don't have something more than a concussion, like a head bleed. If so, then I'm gonna potentially opt for uh, some neuroimaging, like a CT scan. Uh, once we rule that out, we'll put them through some other things. We'll have them do some balance tests, some memory tests. I wanna try to gauge how their brain is working and functioning. Doctors then come up with a treatment plan to get patients back to school or work. I think of symptoms from a concussion in, in four different boxes or categories, if you will. I think of physical symptoms, so nausea, sometimes there's vomiting, uh, vision disturbances. I think of cognitive issues, but more of how the brain is functioning. Do they feel slowed down and foggy, uh, trouble laying down new memories? I think of sleep disturbances, so sometimes people's sleep will be thrown off. Uh, and then. Finally, we think of emotional disturbances. So sometimes, especially like in the younger kids, their most prominent symptoms will actually be a change in their personality. As part of a research project, Dr. Lucas is looking at how concussions affect driving and reaction times. With this specialized driving simulator, patients who have suffered a concussion are put through driving performance tasks. For example, it measures how hands react with the steering wheel or how a foot reacts with the pedal. There are different tasks that are needed for people to be able to drive, and they have to put all those together to really be a good and safe driver. We've had uh, about four patients uh, go through our, our driving simulator after their concussion, and, and what I can tell you uh, from the, the staff that's giving them these tasks is that uh, they are markedly slow uh, in their reaction, in their foot pedal reaction times. It can make them more symptomatic. They have trouble concentrating and focusing. Uh, on these tasks, and to me that's very troubling information, uh, knowing that these kids are potentially behind the wheel out there, uh, and I think we need to investigate this a little bit more. The best diagnosis and treatment for concussions with sports medicine specialists at Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine Institute. A life and death battle rages inside the trauma unit. A woman was hit by a truck and has injuries so severe she is literally bleeding to death. And this is an amazing story. The trauma team frantically works to save her. Every minute counts. Watch as we take you inside the trauma unit at Spartanburg Medical Center to see if our trauma team was able to save her life. Being a level one trauma center, the thing we get first is we get a page. So the first thing we knew is that it was a, a roughly a 60 year old woman who had been hit by a dump truck. And so that kind of already sets the stage. My very first thought is this is someone who's very seriously injured. The first thing that you notice about her is she has some severe orthopedic injuries. One leg was nearly severed, the other was obviously broken. The reality is while those must be the most obvious injuries, those are likely not what are killing her in the next sort of five to 20 minutes. And it's our job as the trauma center and the trauma team to identify those injuries because that's the part where we can make a difference between someone dying and someone living. My first impression of her was that she was very severely injured, likely bleeding internally, but I definitely felt like that if we performed like we were capable of performing, she had a chance to survive. My other thought was, given her age and the severity of her injuries, those chances were small, which meant that we had a pretty narrow window in order to find the bleeding, stop it, and go about trying to save her life. What you'll also see and what also happens is the team becomes almost a well-oiled machine at that point. And it looks like chaos to anyone on the outside, but the reality is it's about 10 people all sort of simultaneously doing their jobs at a very high level. And that's what you'll see. Everything from putting her on oxygen and checking an EKG for her heart to establishing IV access to grabbing sort of IV fluids uh, and blood available and getting an ultrasound machine ready to assess for internal bleeding. And all of that happens simultaneously in the first one to three minutes of arrival in the trauma bay. With her multiple life-threatening injuries, Carol received 70 units of blood the trauma team called in specialists, such as orthopedic surgeons, and rushed her to the OR. So given my specialty, I'll see anything from a child who has fallen on the playground, 
to someone who's tripped on a curb to the typical patient like Carol, which was in a really bad car wreck and has multiple injuries. So she had a hip socket fracture on the left. She broke both of her thigh bones. It's very difficult to examine things below fractures or when there's multiple injuries in one extremity. And so almost as you are trying to address one injury, you may run into another injury, especially in a patient who doesn't have the ability to tell you what hurts or where their problems are. So she had a knee dislocation below one of her thigh bone fractures. And then the most dramatic injury was she had what used to be called compound, now we call open and tip fib, so the, the shin bone and the bone with it were basically irreparable. Family and friends rallied behind Carol from the first night she was in the hospital. If she survives the night, there's a chance that she'll survive. I was absolutely terrified, and I remember saying to somebody, I cannot lose her. She is such a big part of my life that I cannot stand to lose my sister. I kept telling her that I loved her and that I needed her here. I don't remember any of the accident. I don't remember seeing the vehicle. I never hit the brake or the gas. I just slowed down for a turn. I don't remember talking to the first responders. I don't remember getting in the helicopter. But the next thing I remember is going down to the OR for my seventh surgery. And that was, what, I think 10 days later. So I had lost at least 10 days. Several things about Carol's case were unique. The first was, had she not come to a level one trauma center, she would not have survived her injuries. The second was, had she not come to a level one trauma center that had a unique collection of, of surgical specialists, uh, have lived, but she would not have walked again. And the fact that she's doing both, I think, highlights the extraordinary care that she got. Carol was in the hospital for 52 days. Her doctors told her there was a chance her damaged leg would not heal and there were worries about infection. She didn't want to take a chance she would lose more of her leg, so she made the decision for amputation. They told me that they really wanted the leg to go, that they didn't feel like it would heal, and they were scared of infection. They were scared that it was gonna cause a lot of problems. One of the most remarkable days in my career was the day she walked in, probably about nine or 10 months out. She's probably the, the classic story. I tell all my patients that, that it, it's really a team effort. Carol has more surgeries ahead, but is happy she is home with her horses, happy she is alive. I'm doing good. I cannot say enough about the people at the hospital. It was the best care that she could have possibly received. They were so great. And the people in the ICU took great care of her. They were always telling us, why don't you come on back? They were awesome. An extraordinary collection of resources and manpower came together to save her life and give her back her ability to actually go on living. She clearly beat the odds because I would put her risk of dying from her injury somewhere between 60 and 80%. So the fact that she's walking and talking today is almost a miracle. It truly highlights the team that we have here and the commitment that this hospital system has to this community and its outlying areas to help patients in their greatest time of need. The Level 1 Trauma Center at Spartanburg Medical Center, providing the highest quality of care and comprehensive treatment for all injuries. I'm Jack Cleland, I'm one of the pediatricians here at Medical Group of the Carolinas Pediatrics North Grove. And I've been a pediatrician now for several years and uh, do a lot of fun work with kids. And, and, and kids are a lot of fun and what kid is not a kid without toys. So we're here today, we're gonna talk a little about some toy safety and some ideas that I have that I get a lot of questions over the years. I've seen a lot of accidents over the years. One of the biggest questions that I get throughout the year is, what kind of toys can I get for my kids? What kind of things do they need? And the thing you gotta remember is toys have been around since the beginning of time. And toys are fun. They provide an atmosphere where kids can explore. And so toys are a very important nurturing uh, aspect for a kid's development. The thing we have to remember is parents though is that toys also can be very dangerous and especially in this day and age when toys are so prevalent we got to know which toys are designed for which child at which age of life so that they can play they can learn and they can grow but they can also be safe in the process and when you look at a toy one of the first things you ever want to look at is on the box there'll be an age you'll say 
uh, indicated for ages four and up, five and up, six and up. Now, a lot of parents will come to me and say, well, my child can play with that, and they're not four years old. But what they don't realize is that marketing technique from the company has been on there for a reason. And what that company knows is that even though your child may be smart enough to play with that toy, there's something in that toy that they need to stay away from. Even though there's an age indication on there, I tell parents, you're still the parent, you gotta use common sense. Common sense always wins out, okay? So if the child the toy says age 10 and up and your child is 10 years old, that doesn't mean that it's automatic. Well, it's safe for them, they can use it. You know, use some common sense. Your child may not be ready for that yet, okay? And Or you may not have a, a place where they can safely play with the toy. So make sure if you have it, there's a place for them to do that. A lot of lead and toys have been recalled over the years. And, and, and when kids put things in their mouths, you know, whatever is on there, and lead used to be an ingredient in paint years ago. And, and unfortunately, we still see it depending on the country that they're made in, there's still a lot of lead available to be put in kids' toys. And it, and it is not uncommon for us to hear about a lead recall. So when you get a toy, if there is a product registration card, one of the first things that I would tell you is just to fill that out, send it in. And that way, if the company has something and they discover that there's something that's broken with their toy, they can get in touch with you and so you can take that toy uh, back immediately. Most toys, if they're recalled, they'll give you a full refund on it or they'll replace it or, or they'll fix it. Number two, when you're looking at toys, you wanna watch for things that fly through the air. Now, I've got boys and I love Nerf guns. It's probably one of my most favorite guns to play with in the house, and we have Nerf battles at our house. Uh, again, watch for the age on there. Nerf guns are not for everybody. There's a certain age and up where they are allowed. These little bullets come out of here and they fly very fast, and they have a hard tip. Nerf usually will equip you with and tell you to make sure you're wearing goggles, and I would encourage you to do that because if these things fly and they hit you in the eye, it will cause some damage. The other thing is choking hazards. Now, when you look at a lot of these little toys, they're all nice and neat and tied together in a package. Uh, but if you look, there's all these little tiny pieces everywhere. Number one, they're murder on your feet in the middle of the night when you're walking through the house. All right, number two though, if this thing can fit in someone's mouth, they could potentially swallow it. And, uh, and I've seen kids do this and they'll choke on it. A lot of parents will do, if they have older kids, and, you, and particularly if they have older and younger kids, you've got the big kid toys and the little kids living in that world with them. Some of the adults will choose to kind of take out some of the smaller pieces, kind of put them to the side. You can have this toy, but this is the toy that you're just gonna play with in your bedroom. Or if it comes with a thousand little pocketbooks and monkeys and fruits and cups and dishes, they don't necessarily need to play with all thousand pieces. Have a few pieces out for them, but then this way you don't have to worry about stuff being scattered all over the place. But in the event that something does happen, uh, always call for help, all right? The first and foremost is choking, because that is potentially deadly. Uh, 911 emergency room has got to be seen, especially if, we, if we've got a clogged airway and, and, you, and you look over and you see your child and they're not moving anything, no air is moving at all, that is an emergency. Uh, many parents know how to do a Heimlich maneuver. Obviously, that is the time when you'd want to start that. But definitely call 911 or get to an emergency room as quick as you can. Uh, the quicker that piece gets out, the better. Do you know what to look for on your own skin to make sure you don't have cancer? Well, let's check in with one doctor who shows us what's important to know. What are you in for today, Amanda? I started noticing some spots on my arms and I was getting concerned that they might be precancerous. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's talk just for a second about maybe what some of the risk factors might be that would uh, concern me too. Uh, first of all, just standing here and looking at you, I can tell you your skin's a little bit fair. Uh, notice you've got some blonding hair but your eyes look awful dark. You don't have the blue or green eyes that we see of folks who tend to have more trouble with their skin. Another risk factor, let me ask you this about your, uh, just your habits. Do you use a uh, tanning salon or do you lay out in the sun much? I did in the past, I don't anymore. Okay, so you quit doing that. Good, good, that was a good idea to stop doing that because we found that tanning salons do, even though they're just using maybe ultraviolet A uh, rays, actually do cause skin cancer. People that use tanning salons actually are twice as likely to develop skin cancers. 
Now, do you get out in the sun much? Uh, a little bit. Now that summer's kind of ending, not as much. Yeah, but what do you do? What do you do to uh, protect yourself? I tend to only use sunblock when I'm sitting at the pool with my kids, okay. but then I don't get in the habit of doing that if I'm just out and about for regular, yeah. regular days. Yeah, you need to at least use uh, a 30 strength oils and creams and all with a little bit of a blocker in there too. Okay. Do you know when the worst time is to be out in the sun? I think maybe morning. Well, actually late morning. Okay. I always remember it's from 10 o'clock until four o'clock. So before then, after then, and if you're ever working in the yard, get you on those really big fancy hats. So why don't we just take a look? Show me what it is that's concerning you. Um, I started just having a couple moles pop up and then some of these white spots. I don't know right. where the white spots came from. All right. Well, moles are common. You know, we can actually have up to about 40 moles on our skin and that's okay. But when we're looking at these, the two things that we're kind of, just to make it simple, we classify them into non-melanomas and melanomas. Non-melanomas are the most common types of skin cancer that we see. Those are the ones that pop up and they go away. They pop up and they go away. They are irritated, they may bleed. That's a bad sign. The two types that we see are basal cells and squamous cell. Now here's the good thing, they can both be treated. Okay. Squamous cell rarely will ever metastasize, very rarely. Basal cell will not. Mm -hmm. But if we can catch them early enough, we can keep them from getting too big. You know, we have about 8,000 people here that die from melanoma. Oh, wow. And again, it's from sun exposure, from tanning bed exposure. And those come up and they look really odd. First of all, A stands for asymmetrical. Okay. B, borders. Again, if you look at that same mold, the border is nice and round and smooth. I tease people and I say, if you ever have a mold that looks like Italy, we've got a problem. C stands for color. As I look at the molds you've got, they're nice and uniformly brown, they're one color. Melanomas can be all kinds of different colors, black, white, blue, red. And then the D is for diameter. Notice how small those are? Mm -hmm. If you take an eraser on a pencil, it's about seven millimeters. If any moles go seven millimeters or larger, have those looked at. Now, E stands for evolving. If you get something on your skin and it seems to be changing over time, getting larger, getting more irregular, definitely get that looked at. Great advice from Dr. McDonald. Yes, it was. And now we want to head back to Janessa and Bill to see the final result of the healthy eating recipe. Here's our final result of a healthy, nutritious meal. So we incorporated the kale with the berries, the roasted beets, some avocado, some toasted quinoa, and then we topped it with the protein, which in this case is chicken. That looks delicious. Good nutrition is a very important part of leading a healthy lifestyle. If you combine it with physical activity, your diet can help you to reach and maintain a healthy weight, and it reduces your risk of chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. We hope you've picked up some valuable health information. If you have any questions about the pieces on the show, visit our website. Let's make healthy happen together.